I was just uh, cleaning some of my solar panels and uh, some of these amorphous panels here and I just thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about the difference between amorphous panels and the silicon wafer panels these monocrystalline types and uh, polycrystalline uh, this is a polycrystalline you can see the random structure of the crystals there if I move the camera around and um, someone an expert in the solar industry said to me the other day the way to tell between the difference between polycrystalline and monocrystalline was that um, polycrystalline has no gaps so between the cells in the corners here um, the cells are square or rectangular so there are no gaps whereas if you come to the monocrystalline panel you can see that you've got these white diamonds um, which is just where the wafers of silicon have been um, cut off they start originally as circular wafers um, used in the semiconductor industry as well as well <laughs> solar panels are semiconductors I suppose but uh, so um, because they cut the corners off or they cut the sides off I should say you can see these diamond shapes in the corners on this panel here which is has a higher power rating you can see that the diamonds are smaller and I mean theoretically there's nothing to stop them cutting the sides of the wafers short such that there are no uh, diamonds in the corners so I'm not sure that that really stands up but that's the way to tell between polycrystalline and monocrystalline I think the easiest way is if you just look at it you can see these random higgledy-piggledy shapes within the silicon wafers themselves so anyway back to the amorphous panels I'm not so keen on these panels now um, you do need a much larger square footage to get the same amount of power from an amorphous panel as you get from a silicon wafer panel um, they say on some of the advertising blurb that amorphous panels are less um, subject to sort of drop off in power when you have overcast skies but I'm not so sure about that I think uh, that it's basically the number of photons hitting the panel converts to the number of electrons that uh, end up flowing around the circuit and uh, I'm not convinced by these marketing spiel that says um, no need for sunlight works in ordinary daylight I think it's a bit of a nonsense really there's one thing I would say about amorphous panels um, that they have an advantage over silicon and that is in terms of shading if you shade one cell of a silicon panel so for example if I put my hand over one cell there that will have, I've blocked off one thirty-sixth of that panel but the drop off in power will be massively more than one thirty-sixth in terms of uh, watts and that's because when you deteriorate one cell because they're all wired in series you um, you effectively you affect the performance of the whole panel not just that one cell um, amorphous slightly different you've got these thin long thin strips so one cell on an amorphous panel is one tiny little thin strip that runs all the way from the bottom to the top and the only way I could block a cell would be to get something like this stick this bamboo cane so if I sort of put it on the panel like this and manage to just block one cell exactly then again I'll do more than one cell's worth of uh, dropping of the power um, and of course shadows are rarely that shape so you might get a shadow of that shape and that if it's blocking say 10% of the area of the panel will probably result in a 10% drop in power so I would say that amorphous are probably uh, less susceptible to shading issues than silicon panels but quite frankly it's not uh, enough I don't think to to warrant spending all your money on amorphous panels when uh, they sort of to my mind they give you about half the power that uh, an equivalent silicon wafer panel would give you for the same size.